three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash. This is Stan the Man. How you doing, Stan? Good to see you. Thanks for uh, everything that you've done with comics. Uh, thanks for just being a legend and uh, giving us something that's part of American culture. You are one of the few people who have really uh, made a big, big contribution and actually created culture. So uh, good on you, buddy. And then uh, with uh, Stan, as always now, is his new assistant and uh, our buddy, Forky. Forky, glad to have you, buddy. You make everyone smile, and uh, that's what makes you important. So don't ever forget how important you are. And for those of you that uh, are watching this video, if you forget how important you are, remember Forky. Uh, you're, you're needed. Hawkman 13 is today's comic, War Without End. Are they talking about the comic industry? Is that what this book is about? DC versus comic fans? I don't know. Um, so this is uh, by Robert Venditti and new artist Will Conrad, replacing the great... Um, oh, jeez. Uh, Brian Hitch. God, I'm just <laughs> flaking out. My brain does not work like it used to. Brian Hitch... Took a while to grow on me. He he's a solid artist, but his his aesthetic is not really my thing. He's got a very DC house style feel to him. It's very soft. It's very um, personal. Um, it it's hard to describe. If if you if you know the Marvel versus DC house style, when I say this, you get it. But if you don't, you're like, what are you talking about, Ash? DC is is more soft lines. Uh, more like comic, comic booky looking background uh, designs, like for like technology cities. It just it, it's a very unreal look to it. Whereas Marvel is look out your window, everything's got to look just like how it is. Hard lines, characters tend to be more drawn with more angular features, more ripped muscular uh, definition. A lot of cross hatching. It's uh, you know the image style <laughs> kind of ripped that off, or the old sorry the original image style. Anyways, way digressing. This uh, Will Conrad here is not Brian Hitch's level, but you know you got to get your start somewhere. And Hawkman is a low selling book, so this is exactly where artists should come in. They shouldn't get books like Superman. <clears throat> I did my review of Super or Action Comics 1012. I don't know which one I'm publishing first, but oh, see that one. Uh, so Will, I have no problems with him being on this book. Um, he's not quite as good as Hitch. One of the main differences, some of his style looks the same, like these kind of panels. I was like, oh yeah, this is the, the, the visual style looks, but then you see the face is big difference. Uh, Will Conrad has a more of a, almost, there's almost like a little bit of manga influence in this, the way the hair is, shadow on the face, eyebrows, um, it's kind of a yeah. I mean, it's not total manga, but you can you can feel like maybe this guy's drawn manga in the past, and maybe that's where he, you know some artists they, they that's where they start. Ah, oh, Hawkman. Um, where to begin? I don't want to spoil this book, but that's kind of what I do, right? So bear this in mind. This is a filler issue. Uh, the, the last story arc was issues one through twelve, and if you did not get them, highly recommend it. Fantastic series. One of the best ongoing story arcs I've read, you know, for an ongoing comic in ages. This is fantastic. Starts off a little slow, a little weird, because um, I don't, especially if you don't know the character. I didn't. I'm like, oh, who's this guy? Hawk man. He's a guy with wings and a silly looking hawk face mask, whatever. Um, so I didn't get into it right away. I think I got into it like on issue five when everyone was talking about it. I was like, all right, I can pick up these old issues for really cheap. And the cover, the alt covers were awesome. So I was like, these, these B covers, I, I'll, I'll pick it up, read the first arc, give it a chance. So I picked up issue five, picked up one, two, three, four. We're like, I think still on the shelf. They were really easy to find. And then I you know, picked up issue six, read it. Uh, actually, I don't even think I read it when issue six. I was like collecting them. Issue seven came out and everyone's like, oh my God. And so I got that. Now DC has collected this series in trade paperback one through six, but the first story arc really goes one through um, seven. So if you do read it in trade paperback, 
then bear this in mind that there's like one more issue to go. It's not going to end. Um, I'd almost recommend like waiting until the second trade paperback. Well, you can read it. It's fine, I guess. Just to bear that in mind. Like, So what they did, though, was really fascinating is they did his origin. They redid his origin. But unlike things like White Superman where there's like 15 different origin stories they've redone and it forces the fans – you know, it overwrites the previous origin, but if you were a fan of the previous origin and the new origin is bullshit to you, then you're like, what the? They didn't do that here. What they did was um, they wrote on top of his origin. They basically were like, oh, yeah, the origin that you know of Hawkman, that's all true. There's just way more to that story that you didn't know. <laughs> so I think that's fantastic. It's a really... Uh, ingenious kind of way to retell the origin or reshape a character if you're like we need to do more things We're, and they built on they didn't like scrub the past they said oh yeah that you just didn't have the full picture of what was going on that was all true it just now we do and so Venditti has uh, really dog come on so Venditti has done this new story and that's where issue 7 comes in the first 7 issues you will. You can come in not knowing shit about Hawkman, and by issue seven, you're done. You're like, okay, I know this character. I'm ready to go. Then issues eight through twelve tell the third act of that story, and it's just a roller coaster ride. This big epic battle of good versus evil. Totally amazing. I love this book. So this book, now that I've blabbed on forever, is just a filler issue. It's sort of like an epilogue to this whole story. Now we know who Carter Hall is. He had his big battle. And I really appreciate this. I just finished reading it. Um, I really appreciate what Brian, or sorry, not Brian Hitch, um, Robert Venditti did here is he didn't jump right into another big epic, you know, you got to take a breather. You got to, I know it's, it's kind of a shame to have to have comics where we go, um, you know, oh, this is kind of a boring time. Chris Claremont did this really great back in the 80s and 90s when he was writing X-Men. He would have these lull moments of characters. They would be around the house, you know, like playing softball or whatever, interacting with each other. Or they would write these like one-off stories where, you know, Nightcrawler gets kidnapped by Arcade and he goes through the, you know, all the death traps in Arcade's little death dungeon thing and he you know, there's a girl there, and he's so they've got this big swashbuckling adventure. Um, you know, where he has to save the damsel in distress and escape Arcade's death traps and all this stuff. And it's just like it has nothing to do with the greater arc of the X Men storyline, but it was like kind of a breather, and that allowed Claremont to space out these big epic moments that you can't do just back to back to back to back to back. They lose their impact. So as I was saying, um, you need those down times. And I hope that this is what we're seeing here. And we're going to have some smaller stories. It's, it's not as exciting sometimes to read these stories, but a good writer can make them interesting. Claremont did it for the X-Men, and Brian Hitch did it for me here. Um, this story opens up where he's just on a ship. He's in space. He's got an autopilot. Talks to ship. Ship. Set flight deck to autopilot. Destination? I'll let you know. For now, just soar. I am Carter Hall. I am Hawkman. I am an archaeologist and an adventurer. I'm a member of the Justice League. Really? Scott Snyder. Someone phone Scott Snyder and remind him of this? I also reincarnate across time and space. I've been Kryptonian and human and everything in between. I have a difficult time staying in one place. Everyone's life is a constant journey of self-discovery, and I've lived a thousand lifetimes, so my journey is a thousandfold. Lights, when I want to understand more about the past, I go where anyone goes. The museum. Here's the credits. And um, so, On Common Ground is the name of the story. It's a one-off story that is very fitting in the, to Card Hall's universe. And one thing that you can see he's got, he keeps, he keeps his own museum because he's reincarnated across time and space, which sadly is a spoiler for the first story arc, uh, but 
you know, what can I do? Go, go read that. Go get those books <laughs> and collect them and read them before you get all spoiled because you can't, you can only be non-spoiled once, <laughs> you know, if that makes sense. Um, so Carter talks about his li this library and he keeps all this from past lives and he writes his own journals and he sits down and he wants to read. He's like, there's nothing like getting swept up in the mystery and wonder of a story. Even more so when the story I'm reading is my own. And you're just like, oh, that's really freaking cool. And you know, because you're reading, you're yourself. You are a reader. You're reading this comic. You understand. Um, and so it starts off in this trenches of this war centuries ago, year 498 of the Egress Malonite War. And, you know, so we get this sergeant or some guy, stow that pencil unless you plan to stab a Malonite scum with it. Sorry, top sarge. Planet Nebulon. And it's very World War One aesthetic, trench warfare. This war has been going on for centuries. And we've got uh, a previous incarnation of Carter Hall as one of these troops on this war, and they're fighting. And uh, he sees a bird in the sky. The bird. Been months since we've seen the last one. Ever wish we were birds? We could just soar away. And someone shoots a bird. And you just like, knew that was going to happen. You're like, oh. Forget the ration bricks, grounders. It's bird stew tonight. And Carter Hall's first instinct is to be like, you know, what? It's like, hey, no. no. <laughs> um, so just, you know, very Starship Troopers style aesthetic. They're making a charge here, fighting, getting the battle. Everyone's dying. And uh, a sniper picks off, shoots the guys. Um, Carter Hall's lying dead. And he's like, it's. It's happening again. He and now this point in his life, he doesn't understand. Which, if you read the origin issues one through seven of Aquaman, you'll understand. So he doesn't understand what's going on. And the next thing we know, better put that away, Qatar. So it's a different spelling. Year five one seven. Previous year was four ninety eight. So nineteen years later, you know the chief hates when we hold anything except guns or protein sludge. Hmm. I don't. Where am I? is fighting, so now he's on the other side of the war. He's reincarnated. Um, now, he didn't just immediately reincarnate. If you're like watching, go, that's silly, stupid. What happens is he was born, whoever this identity, this Qatar guy, he was born. But at some point in his life, the memories start coming in, like, and he starts becoming a little bit aware that something's wrong. And that's why he's like, where am I? Um, it's not like he just reincarnated then. <laughs> but he, um, so there's the battles going on. They fight. And there's a lot of action and stuff. And then you can see they get to a page where he's dying. And it just happens again. You know, boom. You're 583. You're 635. You're 679. Over and over and over. Uh, he's, he's dying. And this war is going on for centuries. This is a crazy war on this planet. And there's reasons why the war is going on and stuff. And it's it's a very simple story. Um, I was reading this, but Venditti is such a good writer that you get involved. You care about what's going on. And you know this character. You know Carter Hall or whatever incarnation of Carter Hall is, is our hero. So wherever his, he is in time and space... Because of the storyline that was set up in issues one through seven, you know he's going to be our hero. What's going on? What's he doing here? What's his purpose? And uh, we see they're like, time to go. We're going to have an, a, you know, another push. Da, da, da. This has all happened again and again. And we see the soldier putting down his shitty ass ration brick, you know, and Carter looks over and he picks it up. And everyone's like, get down. And the sergeant says, I said, wait for the word, grounder. And this is where. This everything that was just building up that I was kind of like, okay, I'm with you. It's an interesting story. I'm just, you know, I'm along for the ride. And there's no waste of space. Vinity doesn't waste your time. Um, even though it's even in a simple story like this, you're just like, oh, what's going on about this war? Who are these? Who are these people? And we see Carter Hall walking out with a brick. What's this, Shara? Suicide isn't armed. His mistake. Snipers aimed. Just wait. 
And then Carter comes out and he kneels down holding out the brick as a symbol of, you know, peace gesture. And uh, waiting, you know, snipers waiting to shoot him. And then Shira, which if you don't know the story, if you don't understand, I don't blame you if you don't read Hawkman. This will just be like, oh, some woman is coming out to meet him. This is no woman or this is no ordinary woman. Hawkman's true love, you got to get, you got to read issues one through seven. Got him getting choked up because this, this book had an emotional impact on me. This is his true love who also reincarnates in time and space. And they meet up. They constantly find each other. Um, Shira, are you crazy? Get back in position. She's on the other side of the war. And, uh, and she, they don't know. That's the thing. They, they're, they're drawn to each other, but they don't know. It's kind of like if that movie um, with Will Smith. That, ah, such an underrated movie. Uh, gosh, starts with an H. Hancock. If you've seen, oh man, this reminds me a lot of like Hancock in this in this type where they characters find each other. Anyways, I'm not going to diverge, I promise. Um, and so she walks out. She's got a cup. Her hands are up. You want a bite? It won't kill you. Sure, have a sip of mine. Maybe. Ugh, awful. Different though. Different is good. I'll trade my brick for more of that if you've got it, Malonite. I do, Hegris. And we see the guys coming up. I've got plenty to get rid of. And eventually people start coming out, you know, when they see they're not shooting each other. And uh, it's a very simple story. And you might read this, if you're a jaded person, you might read this and go, that wouldn't happen. These guys, like, centuries of war, and these guys are the pawns that they don't even know what they're fighting for. They just, they, they talk about previously in the book where one guy is just like, oh, we've been, my grandpa was fighting. Why, we just, we all fight, we're all going to die. They all think like this. And it, Venditti puts it in a context that it makes sense. And so we see, you know, this little scene and it's, it's beautiful, you know, peace, the soldiers aren't fighting. And then Planet Nebulon today. There's Hawkman's ship, lands. There's a lot of blood on this ground. Egress and Malonite, ours. We see a statue. But we found a better way in the end. And the war didn't make this world. Peace did. And then he looks at the statue. On this place, an enlisted soldier extended his hands, ending the great war between the Egress and the Malonites. Once bitter enemies for generations, the two armies shared their food and made peace. They never returned to their home worlds. Um, and it's just a beautiful, simple, touching story about a past life of Hawkman's that, uh, like I said, takes a break from the bigger story arcs and the things that are going on, which if you haven't read issue 1 through 12, shame on you. <laughs> There's a b massive... Hawkman is a massive part of the DC universe now. Like he's he's huge. His responsibility and things that he's done in the past and what he's responsible for in the future, major major part. But you would never know because DC just keeps him shoved off in this corner. But Venditti is writing his heart out, and this is a it's both a good jumping on point and a bad jumping on point. It's a good jumping on point in the sense that you can read this story. And you don't really need to know much about Hawkman. It's a universal type truth story about love defeats evil, you know, hate. Um, it's a very simple, touching story. If you know the story, you'll get more out. You know, if you know everything that's led up to this, you'll get more out of it. It's bad jumping on point in the sense that it's just one of these simple, basic stories. If you didn't know shit about Hawkman, you read this book, you'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. It wasn't terrible, but it didn't, it's not grabbing me. I'm not enticed to read more. Um, so bear that in mind if this is going to be your first Hawkman book. Like I said, it's good jumping on point for that aspect because you can get the two trades later. Then this will be the first issue going forward. But understand that you're not going to be getting swept away in this great epic storyline with this issue. This is just a simple kind of in-between filler moment issue. So this was fantastic um, for me subjectively like... 
All right, sorry about that. Someone came to the door. Um, now I lose my all train of thought, so the video. So anyways, just wrapping it up. This is a buy. It was really special to me. This whole page subjectively hit me right in the field spot. Um, obviously, everyone has a different life experience. Things aren't gonna ring true, or this, not ring true, but ring, they're gonna, things are gonna appeal differently to different people. I'm not gonna go into why this matters so much to me, but it does, and um, Venditti just, he hit me in the feels again, and I love what he's doing. I understand this may not hit you the same, especially now that I just spoiled everything for you rather than you just hit it, getting it yourself. But this is like almost a perfect book for me, but I'm just gonna give it an honest objective. This is probably a four star book for the average viewer. Um, and that's still fantastic. Four is great. Uh, it's worthy to buy, worthy to get in trade. Uh, everyone should be getting Hawkman. Hashtag read Hawkman. If you are a fan like me, Please share the spread the word. Use the tag read Hawkman. I implore you. Um, we got to spread word of mouth. People will pick up books and read them if everyone is telling them how much they're enjoying these books. It's working for Hulk, Immortal Hulk right now. Um, there's so many books out there. People don't know what to get. Most people are just satisfied with you know the books that they read. Oftentimes they'll be reading just mediocre garbage books because they don't realize that there's all these other great books out there. And I'm constantly finding new books where people are like, hey, you try this? And, I, and I'll pick it up and be like, oh my God, this is, you know, why didn't someone tell me about Hawkman sooner? It was one of those books. I was so prejudiced against this. Um, so I'm starting to pare down the books that I buy and starting to focus on recommendations of other books. I know it can be scary sometimes, especially if you're on a budget. Like for me, one of my biggest problems is someone's like, yeah, you got to read this. It's so amazing. And I'm like, dude, I can only buy so many books per month. Um, so uh, I don't want to fall in love with another book. And then I'm like overbuying in comics. That's a problem too. And I get it. But this is a book I guarantee you is better than most of the books you're buying. This is a title. I mean, not this, not this particular issue. So make room for it and spread the word, please. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Stan. Always great to have you along with us. Forky, thanks for being. We're Ash on Comics, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.